What's that? Does this go out on video? It will only to the Patreons. Only to the Patreons. Ah, oh, grand. Dirty heroes. Should I should 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 I give them a it, a bit no, of tip wouldn't hurt. I'm just it yeah. te- it tends not to. I do a midweek one where I've nothing at all on. So you know well, if, <laughs> if yeah, if they, if they if they subscribe to my OnlyFans, uh hashtag only fans. <laughs> I knew uh, you they'll, they'll get a they'll get plenty of tip, don't worry. Tom, I feel like you're a survivalist. It's it's getting there. It's getting there. The uh, hold on. Only a, a rare few can spot spot that one. What's that? Is that a shell? Is that like a fucking yeah or a medieval dildo? I'm not no, sure. It's, what well, it? you. I mean, it's what you would need. I mean, anything's a dildo if you try hard enough, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> and that is a phrase for life, guys. That's a phrase for life. <laughs> But this is, is, this is uh, yeah, keep, keeping a real marrow. That's a 50 cal. I shot that about three years ago. It's a 50 cal. Nearly my fucking shoulder is only coming out of me hole now. Fucking. <laughs> Jesus Christ. But look, we'll go full. We'll go full. This is where we're at, marrow. Yes. This is where we're yes. At. Uh, it, I mean, yeah. The pit vipers. You got to put on the pit. Vi- Boys, you need to get on the pit viper vibe. I swear to God. So, they're fucking so, sponsoring me and everything at the moment now. It's fucking. Honest to God. So, I, I mean, I'm I'm assuming Style Icon now follows you in pretty much any description for your comedy gigs and whatnot. It, it was we recording it, Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We're recording. Welcome. And there's no fucking intro to the bias. And, you know, the, what's the story bias? It's just, what's the fucking story bias? It's literally that. <laughs> It'll do me. It'll do me. It's, it's far better than reading out Merrill's criminal record. That's all I'll say. <laughs> <laughs> do, do you know what? I was... Because I, I was saying to herself, I said, she goes, who's on the podcast this evening? I said, the vice, the WGS boy. She goes, did you talk to them last, at the beginning of lockdown? I said, you're spot on. I fucking did when we were going, this will be a few months anyway, boys, will it? Exactly. <laughs> a few weeks, about six weeks. Yeah, I remember you were looking at me because Mero asked me, do I think it'll be over by the summer? And I was like, I don't know, Mero. I said, it'll be fucking November before things get back online. Me trying to be the pessimist. You know what I mean? Yeah. And yeah. yeah. I Which remember saying November? that lads at work, um, I remember, I remember in May, maybe the middle of April, the end of April, or the, of the first lockdown, I remember saying to the, we made some work. I'd say we'd be back in the office now in July. <laughs> yeah. We haven't seen them in two years. <laughs> I've, I've given up on the office, lads. I've given up on it. It's, Will you ever go back? No? It's, it's a figment of people's imaginations. It's up there now with fucking Santa Claus, the Easter Bunny, the Tooth Fairy. It's that kind. It doesn't exist. My my sofa is my office, and that's how it shall remain forever more now. Yeah, yeah I can't I can't see it going. Why would the fuck if you owned it if you if you were renting an office as a fucking employer, mm. would you be bothered your whole like what the fuck are you renting now? But a lot of them it? have a lot of them have long term leases, so they have no get out. Like I know oh, a yeah, yeah. company, uh, which is a, I won't name, but it's an American company. Uh, they have they have the lease on that building since I think nineteen ninety seven. And I think it's another uh, 25, 30 year lease on it. So they want to use it, but they've already leased out. The building's so big, they leased out half the building to another company. So they subleased it. See, so after the, likes of, of, the uh, likes of Facebook and Google and LinkedIn, they want their staff back because of that reason. Oh, yeah, See, of course. A, she would, uh, you would do. Them, like, mm-hmm. There's a lot of them as well, though, that like, and I'm not saying this for your company or any company I may be affiliated with, Graham. <laughs> Uh, but there's a lot of them that, like, you know, their CEOs use the size of their office as an extension to their, their, Make their, their yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yes, yeah, Tom. Yeah. yeah. You know, we've got 800 million square feet, fits 400 billion people, can house, blah, 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 blah. You know, it's like, you know, for a oh. fact, these, some of them cunts walk in and they have Wolf of Wall Street playing in their head. They want to have the uh, mic at the top of the office go. I'd be disappointed if they didn't. To they be will have to fucking drag me out. And you're like, nobody gives a fuck, man. I just here for a paycheck. Yeah. Relax. Relax. <laughs> you know what I mean? Going to power meetings and stuff like that. There's no power, you see, if, you, if you're if you zooming it in. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. He, he, there's, there's nothing to be fucking gained by it. You know what I mean? There's fucking yeah. hell. But you're right, Meryl. If I go back, I'll be only going back about two or three mornings a week. I like I'll just that. Come home. It's only five minutes from the office, but you need. I might go back to see what it's like. I definitely won't go back on a Monday or a Friday. <laughs> <laughs> Mero has a Mero all but fucking quit. Do you know what I mean? He's like, listen, uh, if I'm coming back, I'm sticking my head in on a Tuesday, 
and maybe a Thursday afternoon on the way to the pub. <laughs> I'm just saying. And, and bank holiday weekend means Tuesdays is new Monday, so you'll only see me on the Wednesday. And, and uh, only we're splitting the week up the middle. You'll see me for two hours on a, on a yeah. Wednesday of the bank holiday weekend, and I may not be sober. I'm just telling everybody that. <laughs> for for legal, re- I've been told by Merrow's legal team, by the way, for legal reasons, we have to say everything we say on this podcast is satirical and not true. And Graham is a very dedicated father, employee. And what was the third one, Merrow? Style icon. Oh, no, that's me. It's no, me. I'm no, the That's yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure, he's denying all the children he has. So the father bit might be wrong on my side. Near Tom. I'm not speaking. I'm not Tom's good character isn't in question here, but there's a lot of beards of babies in Shank Hill. That's all I'll say. <laughs> and a, a, baby, a lot of babies with beards, no babies with mustaches. <laughs> 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 that thing is taking on a life of its own, though, Tom. It's, it's fucking it's, I can't get rid of it, Dan. It's be it's become more than me. Do you know what I mean? It yeah. is I am I am I'm I'm, I'm fucking what it's a bit say? like Jim Carrey when he puts the fucking mask on, is it? I am secondary. To the style yeah. right now, I, I, I didn't. This is all just a fucking bit of a, a bit of a, a folly, just a bit of crack. And then before I knew it, I genuinely, I went. I said, the fucking mullet's coming off now. I, I, I can't be having hair on my neck. What's this about, like? And what I realized, boys, this, this is freedom right now. Do you know what I mean? This is, this is free. This is the American flag shooting guns in the air. Being allowed to hold an AR-15 while fucking maybe baptizing your child at the same time. This is freedom. I didn't re I didn't <laughs> see we're all being conformed. You've lovely two, you have two fucking you know, high, high and tight fucking haircuts. This is this is just fucking let a rip tatorship. It's it's I've no choice. Danny Hairdrow, Danny Blowdrow is his though. Yeah, I know. His I hair, his yeah, hair is impossible. And I'm having an off day today, as you can see by this little wispy bit here. Uh, <laughs> I like it. I've only had the one blow. I've only had the one blow dry today, and the stylist was in a rush. She had to pick up kids from crash or something like that. Uh. I don't know. So, um, yeah, she didn't give me the 724. Uh, it's it's a very specific number I need to get the the bouffantness of the fringe. You see, um, so we only got the 612 today rather than 724. I mean, there's cutbacks everywhere, Dan, but at the same time, you, you really, really have to put your fucking foot down here. Like, you can't. You can't sacrifice you can't your buffoon. You can't get the staff, Tom. You can't get the staff. You just can't. You Do know? you know, it is it is an employee's market right now, as they say. Everybody's fucking got an issue. Everybody's out. You know what I mean? It's fucking bullshit. But, uh, what, you know, what I, I need to do... What, what I need to do is rob or borrow one of those shells and just leave it sitting around the house as a kind of message to walk and Do you know it's a great, a great message? I'll physically show you a great message here now. Oh, oh shit, the headphones are... You look you're in a bunker, Tom. His head... You read that? <laughs> if you shot again, yeah. Merno might struggle with the big words, but yeah. yeah <laughs> it was a, a podcast listener sent me that. It was like, we found this. Oh, and just, yeah, here you go. It's... Uh, your your listener sends you nice to, we we just get sent knickers in the post and that kind of thing <laughs> and that's mostly Merrill just sending yeah. it to you I get it just sending, yeah yeah you know it's weird when I you get, get a, a, I did a, get the fake spider sent on that's true you did get fake spider sent you yeah that is true are you what? afraid of what we talked about this are you afraid of spiders no 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 not not particularly we when we were doing in the hotel Tom I got a, a I got hate mail. And I opened up the letter and it was saying like, oh, sick of your whatever, whatever, the way, your rhetoric, your certain rhetoric. And uh, a plastic spider a plastic spider popped out. And I kind of jumped. <laughs> and Danny was like, what the fuck? It was, it was sent by a Fina Gael phone because it's, you're so pro Sinn Féin. That's probably, what it was, man. Probably. It's, <laughs> it's like the fucking, the anthrax for a simpleton, isn't it? Like you just... <laughs> I'm going to get him with a fake spider. He'll ruin his day. Is that really? Okay. Okay. Some, someone in deals in Dunleary delighted with their two euro porters with a load of rubber spiders yeah. and a padded envelope. And they laughed all the way to the post box. And they said, ha, Graham Merrigan will never suspect a thing. Well, I, I, I mean, still don't know who it was. Yeah, but really? You, Nobody claimed it at the end of it? No, that's about five years ago. No. Yeah, yeah, you're better off. Sometimes the magic is not known, Graham. Yeah, you'd be disappointed if you found out. I was, I definitely thought it was Danny. Was it not you? It wasn't me. No, 100% wasn't me. No, Jesus. Should, uh, I, if I wanted to annoy him, I'd just do what I'm doing tonight, which is just spreading a load of accusations about him and his <laughs> illegitimate children. <laughs> but, like, 
I wouldn't I wouldn't be arsed on something like that. Especially no, I wouldn't the hotel. Huh? Are you in a bunker? No, I well, I built this. I guess technically it is a bunker. Yeah, no, we moved when we moved down, we moved um we're on the parents' plantation. I make it sound like there's a bunch of fucking people working for them, if you know it's not. It's they have <laughs> Lot of land, and we should we move down first? And we were renting a house up the road. The parents went, Well, there's an acre there if you want to use it for a while. So I bought a log cabin. Uh, well, I built it really, built the log cabin, and I built this as well, built the studio as well alongside it. Love it, real, yeah. Well, have you got running water and all? Just about, I mean, by that, I have to run and get it, you know, if that's what you mean. Yeah, so <laughs> are you on the bike to get electricity and all? Listen to this cunt, listen to this cunt, like. Fucking they have footpaths. That's about all fucking Ballybrack has to fucking blow. <laughs> they have fucking footpaths. You're about to be so congested with what those fucking property vultures are building up there at the minute. Ten thousand homes and stuff. You yeah. may need a fucking bunker yet with the amount of guns moving in there. <laughs> yeah. The the parish of fucking Ballybrack. You'll never see Dublin City ever again because you'll never get out of it. You're How right. many fucking people are they going putting in? The fucking madness continues. Like and Cherrywood is about to be like. I know. They're about to be penetrated deeply by some fucking very wealthy fucking property developers. Just let's build loads and loads and loads of apartments and let's see what happens. How the yeah. fuck? Like, you have to get out now, Graham. Get out now. I'll get down to you on your I, parents' plantation. There'll be plenty of space here. That's the great thing about the countryside. There'll be plenty of space here. Do you, do, I, you, do, I, you, you don't have to stress about fucking the cunt next door. We, the other night, right? The other night, this is the most country shit that ever happened. Do you have Mars bars and all down there? <laughs> no, 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 no. We we still have Marathon down here, Graham. Yeah. We have meanies and, and Brennan slice pan. We have uh Banshee Bones. We don't have meanies. Um uh, Banshee Bones and we have we have Irish Pride, unfortunately. Oh, yeah. yeah. Do. <laughs> it's only good, it's only good prowl insulation, that Irish Pride. It's true. I, it yeah. I would give it to a fucking Protestant. It's fucking 50 <laughs> It's fucking rotten. Stick stick it between the dry board for a bit of insulation. That's about all I do with it now. Well, we were there the other night and there was this bloke shoot, out shooting in the field next door. And he was shooting too close to the fucking house now. And it was dark. You you know, like, well, I knew what he was doing. He was out with a fucking lamp. He was obviously fucking a couple of foxes or rabbits. I don't know. But he was too fucking close to the house. Like, give it a rest, you know. Mm. And I said, and herself was like, will we call the guards? I'm like, no. <laughs> the guards don't come down this road, love. They know better. <laughs> they know better. We're all... We all look after our own law. This is Copperhead Road. Are you fucking joking me? This is fucking, this is, and genuinely, I stood outside the door. And it was only afterwards I was laughing, going, oh, fucking hell, that is country. This guy was shooting. So you hear, a shot went off. And in between, <laughs> in between the reload, I went, hey! And you managed, shot again. He went, yeah! I went, knock it the fuck off! <laughs> Sorry! <laughs> We're across the fucking field. And he stopped. He walked away. <laughs> And I went back in thinking I was the toughest man ever. Herself was just like clutching the child, like, oh, I think maybe Dublin Mike wasn't that bad. I was like, yeah, we're in the country now. Shit gets done what, down what, here. What made you escape the big smoke, Tom? It was uh, we. It was it was always kind of on the cards, but I could never see it. Herself I always wanted to move to the country, country, and we were in. Mm. We were in ridic. The last time I talked to you, we were in ridiculous and it's scary. And I call it ridiculous yeah. and it's scary because it's especially where we were living. It was fucking ridiculous. I, a scumbag like me had no business around these people. Like they all had electric gates. We had electric gates. Sure. So it's only to keep me in. Like that's all that was. It was just, you know, you don't let a fella like me in around these people. Like they all with those half Brit accents. Good morning. How are you? It's like, uh, fine, fine. I'm fine. Love. Yeah. When, <laughs> when this fella rang one day, he rang the gate, right? I swear to God, he rang, buzzed the fucking gate, which, for a full year I was still confused by going why would what what the fuck is this like I never agree with these fucking things just but your man's buzzing the gate and I the red flag immediately and herself had put the seed in my head about going will we get the fuck out of here and she put the seed in my head about a week previous and this buzz, guy buzzes the gate I answered on the inside and I went hello and he went, rather than saying it's Jerry from next door or it's fucking Graham from up the road he went Good morning. And he named he named himself as the name of his house. Like, oh, no. yeah, yeah, I swear to God. And the name of his house was, I can't but, remember. It was something like, it was something like out of the wind in the willows. It was like fucking Toad Hall or Badger Hall or something. I swear on my life, right? And I went, yeah, hello, fucking Toad Hall. 
Anyway, and he continued rather than go, no, no, it's it's Brendan from Toho. He just continued like he was the house talking to me. And I'm going, am I having an outer body experience? Am I talking to a house? How is this part through a gate? What? And he was he was fucking going on. There was some shit blew into his garden, some tent or something blew into his garden. He made out it was mine because, of course, I'm the only scumbag who would have a fucking tent. Turns out it wasn't. Now, if it was empty fucking shotgun shells, maybe, but it wasn't. <laughs> It was fucking, some fucker's tent had blown across. And at that point, I just hung it back up when we were going, pack the fucking bags. I, <laughs> I can't talk to a man's house. I can't talk to a man's. This is not. Pack the bags, Brendan Holland. This Imagine not. that though. Hello, Brendan. This is Brendan from Toad Hall. No, 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 no. Not yeah, even. Brendan. Not even Brendan. Actually, just the house name, Meryl. Just the fucking so house hello, name. hello, like, hello, Toad Hall. Yeah. Hello, oh. it's, Toad, it's Toad Hall here. And it was As like residence. It was something. It was genuinely. It sounded like something out of Wind in the Willows. It was like, what the fuck? Am I in some sort of psychedelic fucking dream? Have I taken something? Like, there's there's that house talking to me down the phone, and I'm <laughs> holding a landline. 1980 fucking one. What's going on? Like, this is the weirdest fucking moment in my life. I went, this is not on. I can't. So there's there's a thing after playing in, and I can only presume it's your aim because of course we are adjacent. And I, dude, I swear to God, I should walk down in my underwear and wellies and polishing a gun <laughs> just to fucking ask you the question again. But yeah, we were done. We were done. And that was that. that as soon as I fucking, as soon as I, we made the decision, we were out the fucking door. And I swear to God, it was like I created an exodus. A good five five, maybe six. Yeah, I'd say six of my friends have all scattered to the wind. They've all gone. Because the likes, say, yeah. you, you get the likes of fucking Gordo Rochford. He rang me. Mm. He's Because you, you're drilled into your head that you're supposed to be in around the capital. You're supposed to be in around, even though you're not really using it at all. Everybody does the mm. same thing the country over. You go in in the evening from work, close the door behind you, and you watch the telly. And the telly, there's tellies everywhere. Meryl, would you believe that? There's fucking tellies down the country. Yeah. And that was it's, it. It's he, I tell you what's great. If you turn on the telly on Wednesday evenings on Virgin Media 1 at about 9 o'clock, it's great viewing. I, I don't worry. We'll get Just... around to it. <laughs> we'll get around been, to it then. I've been winding him up for months over because he still hasn't fucking watched it. So any chance I get now, I'm like, <clears throat> don't worry. Yeah, so, I watched anyway. the first three episodes and then I just had other things to do. No, that's grand. You're not supporting your friend. It's okay. All right, fucking let's have it then. <laughs> Gogglebox, how did it happen? Tell us more. Genuinely, uh, well, how does that come Tell the true story, Dan. How the fuck does Gogglebox okay, well, come around on. like? Or... Well, well Graham's after saying tell the true story. What's the true story, Graham? I don't know. What so, do what are you saying? Tell the... Yeah, well, you're well, assuming he's well, going to just feed him. me a story now for the show, like just go ah, fuck yeah, yeah, yeah. pump he'll up he'll the tires. Yeah, story yeah. that he was disinterested. It wasn't his idea. It wasn't and, my idea. And then he, sh- he just showed up. It was, well, you you can't show up to your own house for a camera crew. <laughs> There's something weird about that. No, but you can leave. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, look, lads, you don't want to know how the sausage is made, right? <laughs> so, you know, look, essentially, uh, the lovely Oksana, my wonderful partner, said... Wife to be in June 6th this year. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, June, June 5th tomorrow. If you turn June up on June 6th, you will have missed it. <laughs> That's the most marrow line of this whole. We we won't even chat chat twenty minutes, and the most marrow thing of all time. Going, I'm going to get the date of my best friend's wedding completely fucking he's, wrong. He's a fucking groomsman. If he turns up the wrong day, we're fucked. Like, <laughs> so, you're some uh, pox yeah. bottle. Honest to God, Graham, I haven't got to say pox bottle in a long time, and I'm so glad. No pox bottle. What it's a, a great pox bottle is a great word. Oh, it is, yeah. I got gimp. It. I'm I'm on a I'm on a good one for gimp at the moment as well. Gimp. I don't know why. Yeah, That's flute. Real cool down, I I, I called somebody flute. a flute. Oh, I love. Flute. Oh, me and Danny love flutes. I was yeah. on the phone just earlier than this, and we were describing. <laughs> <Do> we, <Graham? laughs> we love a flute. That'll be the title of today's show. Graham Absolutely, that's flute. it. We're done now. Yeah, that's it. We're done. <laughs> Especially on the twelfth. <laughs> anyway, um, <laughs> yeah, I was talking with a friend, and there's there's retro words that should definitely make comebacks. Like flute is a quality one. I I just called yeah, it. It just came out of my head from like nineteen fucking ninety five. Talking about Brilliant. this lad who used to run gigs, and he says, "What sort of?" It? I said, "It's a fucking flute." And he started laughing. He went, ah, "I've heard flute and yonks," and I went, "I've heard yonks and yonks." Yonks, <laughs> fucking yeah. quality. Quality. I went I, to um I went to Emma Kerwin's latest show in the Project Art Center, straight to video, 
Oh and yeah. It was about, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It was about the goings on of a video shop in the in nineties talent. And it was just retro word after retro word. It was just brilliant. But like that flu yonks cabbage, you think me jig, like yeah. all those classics. I've never been told by a woman in a, in a, it was, it was a GA club. She was an old one and she would have been fucking banned from any pub. Do you know what I mean? She was one of them old ones to just get away with being a lifelong club member. Like, where was yeah. it? It was the Dosco Centre. It was there near, oh, it's not fucking Kilmainham. Do you know, it's the other side of the canal. It's a bit Is fucking... this when you were performing? Yeah, yeah, it was a gig one night at this fucking thing. What's the name? You know, the other side of the canal from Kilmainham, fucking Inchicore. What's the other side there? No, we're all... Drunk Condra, Kulak? We drunk Condra, no. Fucking... No, drunk Condra's miles up the other end. Yeah, Dolphin's yeah, yeah. Barn. Bayside, yeah, Turf. Dolphin Barn, but to other side of the road, you know, that kind of way. And where it right, gets a bit right. industrial, and it, meets, it meets the Lewis. Um, Meadow's just shouting out earlier. Like now. I was just fucking... thinking that. I'm going to just start. <laughs> That'll tell you how much this that fucker knows about fucking Dublin. He doesn't know one fucking corner of the place, bar fucking Bally Brackett. He's literally outside it. Fuck it. it. You know, you know, it's Bally Brack to Tala, and that's fucking it. And <laughs> after that, he's just like, right, if I was playing Monopoly. Uh, Crumlin, Himmage, <laughs> Rat Moines, right, Rat go yeah. What's the crack? <laughs> right. <laughs> Sorry, go on. What were you saying? Go on, go on. There was some she, fucking hell. This fucking one kept on piping up, and I was headlining this fucking show, and she was fucking wrecking everybody's head. Just being just a heckling, fucking, right? Just heckling, but shite heckles. Like, just seeing you. Just being a fucking dose, like, and nobody was, and it was an old one too. Like, what do you say? To, you know, she's fucking an old one. But I was in my head, I was like, fuck her. I don't give a shit. And I'm up there and she, she's back and forth a small bit. I said, do you realize you'd be fucking barred from any place in the country? The fucking mouth on you. Who's related to this weapon? And this poor cunt on the, at the bar went, that's me, old one. I said, would you fucking do something with her? A bin bag, some fucking thing with her. And your one was loving it though, because she was just, she loved a big fucking row. And I went on another bit. She just pipes up, now the smell of Benji up you. I went, that doesn't make any sense, but I've, now the smell of Benji off me. I said, what the fuck does that mean? And I remember hearing it years ago. And it, do you know who she was? She was the actual real life PJ character as the old one. That's who she was. She was the real life <laughs> fucking version of that. Was she that old? Oh, she was ancient. She fucking headscarf the whole lot, like just an abusive little old woman who'd lived her life just being a fucking scumbag, like just shouting What's at Benji people. Mean? I, I haven't heard the smell of Benji off you since I was in primary school. As far as I, I remember, never. it's a bit, of, it's a bit of a pissy smell. As far as I remember, is that it? Because nobody could tell me. Nobody knew the yeah. the origins of it. I was going genuinely. Never heard anybody, of it. it. It was an insult. That's how undoubling you are, you cunt. You're from fucking Wicklow. Honest to God, there's. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you're God. nearly there you're practically there anyway so Dublin's only a fart of a fucking place you'd fall out of it into a fucking other county you're fucking way close on the border there you're fucking way close that's fucking tell you now you're only fucking hop skipping a jump to Lord Wicklow break. Lord Wicklow but yeah smell a fucking bang a Benji I think or is a smell of Benji Banger but band. again it was a real childish fucking thing but nobody could explain what the fuck it meant like pox bottle nobody really could give any any fucking origins of yeah. it that was your worst heckler was it Tom no, no, no. The worst fucking heckler was somebody, two lads with a gun. Uh, oh, you told, yeah. you told us that one. Yeah, Jesus. Yeah. yeah. Hucking, there was like, a whole thing about that. I think we, we accidentally caused you guff with that because we'd PJ got, yeah, you told us that story. And about two weeks later, we'd PJ on, the sto- on our podcast and we told PJ about you telling us that story. But PJ fucking forgot that we had told him about you telling us it. And then he went on your podcast and told you about it. And you're like, hang on a fucking minute. Is someone robbing my story? Yeah. And I'm, just, just, I'm, like, I'm after causing a fight. Hang on. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that was a good while ago now, though. That was, uh, yeah. yeah that was four years ago. Yeah. You don't get, like, you get some quality ones. Like, you get, fuck, there can be yeah. some by pure fucking fluke, too, like, that are just, they didn't mean it to be funny. And, the situation was fucking perfect. And that's the perfect heckle. When you're just getting some fucking Egypt just shouting. And it's normally, it's never a good, like when it's that, it's never anybody who's that sharp. They might yeah. get the better one or two newbie comedians, like or whatever. And they're fucking proud as punch. But then they just pipe up with something and you'll just fucking drive them into the ground like a fucking tent peg. You know what I mean? Fuck them. Like, yeah. yeah. The, the one, the one that you get and like that, if it's, if it's a newbie and you can see them kind of, Oh shit. It's that whole like, when does the comedy start? Yeah. That heckle. 
Yeah. That heckle. And I knew be will fucking f- just throw flail under that question. But Jesus Christ, them boyos. I yeah. often wonder, like, why, even, even when you're at a gig, more so, like, not a band, but, like, a singer-songwriter uh, or a comedian or whatever, I often wonder, I've, I've sat beside people that have heckled or had shout up things, and I've often wonder, what, what made you think that was a good idea? They didn't just see Meryl. You actually yeah. have a presence of mind to think about what comes out of your fucking face. These dipshits. Do you know the sort of fellas, do you know the sort of fella now that stops in the middle of a footpath to answer his phone? A busy footpath. And all you want to do is shoot him, dead, to <laughs> take him out of society. Now you don't, obviously, because that's frowned upon in most fucking societies. But yeah. if you, you know, to the letter of the law, if you were up in court and you said, look, he stopped in the middle of a fucking busy footpath to, to check a text. I think most people, 99, if they were honest, would go, oh, no, I get that. That's yeah. the sort of person. Fuck the world. I'm going to say what I think is fucking worth saying here. And it's terrible. Nine times, 99% of the time, it's just, you fucking clown. And then you add drink to that. And yeah. they're buzzed, they're out, and they fucking probably hate the wife, the fucking kids are doing their head in, and they're going to shout at fucking Christy Moore. And fair play. You know, you get somebody like Christy who goes, here, whoa, whoa, whoa. shut the fuck up and get out. You know? Yeah, well, la- last night I was at Christy. And, um, when are you not the- at Christy, by the way? Is there- I know, yeah. Like, do you hang around outside the window just waiting for... Is that a new one, Christy? No. Okay. Is that a new one, Christy? <laughs> he did a new one last night that I didn't... I hadn't heard live. That's Please tell me it was about Jocks across the COVID or something. Was, come on. He's, <laughs> he has to be brewing one on fucking real. <laughs> whole album of the fucking... The crack was 90 in the Isle of fucking COVID. He has to. Yeah, he has to, yeah. He'll come up with something. But the, he was... um. He, he had told a brief little story about the song and it was quite like a somber, you know, reflection song. Yeah. And then um, he was he was getting a, gathering himself together to start it. And there's a, everyone was respected the story. And then there's a group of, say, five or six, maybe two or three rows in front of him, just having a conversation as if, like, he just having a chat. And he stopped and he goes, are you all right there? Do you, do you want me to go where we, we wait for you? Is like, or... Oh, and they were God. cracking up as if, like, oh, it's like, well, yeah. I just don't wrong, get it. Wrong, wrong gig to do that at as well, isn't it? You know what I mean? Like, yeah, he will break the fourth wall. Like, he does, like, he oh. will, like, there's no better fella to stop the fucking show and break the fourth wall. Exactly. And, and he has, he has 99% of the backing as well when, when he does. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. Battle the hecklers. Cause last night everyone erupted when he said what he said. And he has a nice, like, he does a kind of, Almost like uh, he does it kind of gently, but gets the message across. <laughs> like telling he, people to get the fuck out. That was yeah, that was yeah. fairly on the nose, the mirror. I don't know if there was <laughs> yeah. a lot of subtlety in that. Because it wasn't subtle now, no. That uh, one was to get your fucking refund to get on, get on your way. That was a deadly one. But last night's one, it was it was done, it was done nicely, but he got the message across. But I just don't get that. I don't get even at, I've been at comedy shows where people are just in a in a group and they just are like 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 a woman last night actually what happened last night right um vicar street you know the way this this the the seats and the stools are, are yeah. screwed into the floor yeah well the, the disabled stools on either side of the front row are loose it's a loose table and loose uh stools just so you can wheel in and uh, so, uh, a group of four able-bodied plebs were uh, sat at my wheelchair ah, table folks that i booked right so I was like, I was telling the staff, no, look, take a master and you guys that you don't number the wheelchair table because it's it's not it's not screwed in. So that's actually mine and they should be beside the the empty table. So anyway, about 20 minutes later, and I'm still not at the table. And a member of staff went over to this. It was uh it was like a mother and father, uh daughter and daughter's boyfriend. And the member of staff went over and said, I'm gonna unfortunately I'm gonna have to ask you to move. Um, because this is the, the wheelchair seating area and um, we're going to have to ask you to move. And the woman goes to the to the member of staff, are you, are you moving this? You know, Tom, the back of Vicar Street upstairs where it's lined? Yeah. Yeah. Balcony, so they were, yeah, yeah. yeah, they were suggest, suggesting to sit up in the balcony. And the woman goes, sure, we won't be able to talk up there. <laughs> and I'm, I, says, I says to my friend, I, was, I said, did that woman just say we won't be able to talk? And she's like, yeah. I was like, what the fuck? 
like? You're fuck off home with talky cunts. Yeah, so she moved into the middle, into an empty table, and the, the agreement was that they could stay there until the people arrived. The people never arrived, so they stayed in there. But she wasn't moving until they she got a round table so she could so she could talk. Well, surely her, tic- her tickets should have been for the... <clears throat> like, how did she end up at your table? Like, Jordan, because your tickets say your fucking seat yeah. and table number, don't they? Yeah, when you... See, Ticketmaster have now allowed wheelchair users, disabled people, to buy tickets online. Beforehand, it was always. Do you remember, Dan? We always used to have to ring up. Yeah, we'd ring up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And you'd be on, you'd be on, the, you'd be on the the line for about forty minutes on hold. But now, in a lot of venues, most venues, they've allowed you to uh, buy it online. But what happens with Vicar Street is they don't allocate allocate. As I was saying, the stool and the tables are screwed in, and they're numbered. But the loose wheelchair tables and chairs aren't numbered. So they just right. say table eight. And that's actually table eight. And you're kind of going, and then they give the other people table eight. So the wheel, it's a good system. It's a, it's early days. It's only just started before Christmas. Yeah. Um, so I'll I'll put it down to a glitch. And uh, your one was trying to mansplain to me though last night. Uh, you know, you know, you have to get wheelchair tickets. And who I was the like, fuck was trying to explain to you? You're one who was sitting yeah. on your seat. No, the girl in the, uh, the Ticketmaster boot. So security had to go out to the, you know, the Ticketmaster boot. Ara for yeah. the love of Jesus. And she came out and came into me and she and she was, firstly, she started talking to my friend about me. So my friend was like, that, talk to him. It's not me. So then she's like kneeling down. Uh-huh. And, and she's only about like late 20s. And, I, and she says, I just um I need to see your ticket because you do know you have to buy specific wheelchair tickets. Oh sure, heaven forbid you wouldn't know what what end of a computer to be looking in at. Huh? <laughs> Sorry, I tried to bite the fucking laptop. Is that not going to do it? No. Huh? You should have started fuck fucked your phone at the stage and just does that make it happen? I don't know what this is. And just face backwards, actually back into the fucking stage, you're back to the stage and go, I'm a pint in the right direction now. Make a holy fucking show over. I'd go to fucking town, start pulling your top off. Just whatever, just to make a spa of that situation because oh. <laughs> you're speaking to a grown fucking man. Like, it. <laughs> oh, you want to see? She walked off and I said to my friend, did she just mansplain to me how to buy wheelchair tickets? Like, is she for real? And then she, you know what she did? She got that cut, that, that those four people that were sitting there. She got them, she re, reprinted new tickets for them to originally go to the balcony. And she gave it to the poor teenager, Vicar Street member of staff to go over and deliver the bad news. Of course. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I couldn't believe it. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. you do, you get, and I was only just, I was talking earlier with a, a mate, it was about a gig that we did years ago. And it's funny that you talk about people that talk, like they're just, they're the same people. They're the same people that stop in the middle of the footpath. Fucking. Yeah. And sometimes they make collections of these fuckos. And really they should have their rocks put in their pockets and just pushed out into the fucking... <laughs> Done Leary Harbour and just off you go. And if you can make it back, well, Hunger Games it, you're in. But if you can't, <laughs> you know, society wins. Like, you know, yeah, made the, may the gods be in your fucking favor or whatever it is. Like, like <laughs> these fuckos will not, and they will never. Can you imagine two of those people producing a child? What no, is going Tom, to happen no, from no, that? Tom, don't, don't, recording it. of a recording is never any good with the old tapes years ago. It's always dirt. And that's yeah. what happens. More fucking dum dums. It was always dirt. It was always yeah. dirt. You're trying to fucking record fucking Coolio off the radio. And the next <laughs> thing you give it to a mate. <laughs> We're getting fair deep in nostalgia here, boys. <laughs> Thanks to Paradise. But you, it's not bad off the radio, but you record it another time and it sounds like fucking Daniel O'Donnell singing Thanks to Paradise. <laughs> And you, you used to try and record it. it. That's the cover version I want. <laughs> you used to try and record it and not get the not get the DJ's. Yeah, voice yeah, 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 yeah. These fuckers. We did a gig years ago in a rugby club in in Cashel, and a fucking working working man's fucking club. You know, it's not like not like the typical rugby that. Although in fairness, it's starting to expand in Dublin into more normal places, but it's a working blokes club. And we did a gig myself and John Caleri. Lovely show. These people were in the zone. They were never fucking been to pro- like they were in great form. It performed exactly like a comedy audience. Second half, I bring John on, and these three young ones walk in from the back. They'd obviously be pre-drinking. They didn't know what was going on. They didn't give a fuck. They just started talking as loud as you like amongst each other. And 
a couple people know him because it's a small town. They know. So they're like, they're fucking doses. And I said, I'll go over and say something. And as I'm about to go over and say something, a woman in the second or third row stopped Cleary. She stood up like it was a town hall meeting. She goes, sorry, John, for one second there. She turned around. Three, ye, shut the fuck up. <laughs> and sat back down. <laughs> and everybody just gave her a round of applause. And she goes, go ahead, John. You're grand there now. And Cleary like was in ribbons for at least a minute minute and a half he was he lost it completely never seen that and talk about crowd control it's like that's who you need you yeah. need an old one called mary third row who'd fucking eat you for fucking yeah, without yeah. salt and she fucking yeah. ate like didn't fucking not a peep out of him there's like, a lot to be said there's a lot to be said for that kind of manners in a community where there's one old one who everybody not off oh, here's patsy shut up to here's patsy shut up to fuck do you know what yeah. i mean like you need it. You need that in a town. She was yeah. an enforcer. Like there was nobody going to cross that woman. And John made the next 10 minutes of material all about her. And it was, <laughs> it was the funniest <laughs> shit. Just off the cuff, funny fucking shit. Just inventing stories. That's the best comedy, it. isn't it, Tom? It was beautiful. It was just, everybody was in the flow state. It was a beautiful fucking, it was, a, it was un- unexpected because, you know, you're, you're essentially upstairs in, you know, you're in the attic of a fucking, a barn. Which because it's you know a newly built fucking comedy or fucking rugby club, so it's it's for all the world uh, fucking industrial unit. You're in the attic of it. Literally, they had two pallets. I they said, well, "Fuck, we don't have a stage for you." I went, "Anything, lads, just to create any to form of elevation, anything." Mm. So the lad went, "We've pallets. Will that be terrible?" I went, "Not at all. To do the finest." <laughs> I, but you know what? It just added to the crack. It was like every yeah. every second step, your foot is going through the fucking slats and stuff. But <laughs> it was the fact that they so got on board and were ready yeah. to smile, and they didn't need any more coaching after that. They had good fucking manners, and it was actually it was actually perfect. Those three bitches piping up because it showed everybody else how well behaved that they were. Do you know? Yeah. And yeah. It, it it took the fly straight out of the ointment. It was a beautiful yeah. fucking moment where you watched it. I'll start right. this, John. I remember Danny was gigging out in the Haypenny and um, before he went on, there was a there was a guy that was on before him and he was getting really badly heckled. No, I don't actually think he was getting heckled. There was two girls at the bar upstairs and they were just having a conversation between themselves and he got really, really offended. And he was really, um, he was really offensive to the girls now, do you know what I mean? Like they were, when, when he corrected them, they kind of stopped. But he kept going. Ah, oh, fuck. And and they didn't they didn't heckle him. They were just they were. I was agreeing with him at the start, but then I was just like, mate. He started saying where well, he's dragged up in the lift. He look, he's look like it and all. I was like, ah, oh, here. Do you remember See, that? That's that's, I, I I don't remember the specific. He's a red headed lad. It's kind of shaved hair. Uh, no, I, I, I don't I don't remember the specific incident now, but the the, the Haveney, I used to love the Haveney because it's such a small room and you got to go crowd the buzz in there just. Fucking hovers That's and you class. can feel yeah, it yeah. like, but the bar is so close to the stage. the stage that even with a mic, you know, one slightly loud, slightly drunk fella ordering two points will will cut across your joke if you're not careful. Do you know what I mean? And it's. That's half the fun of it. The as two well, girls are. Like, I think the two girls are discussing something harmless as will we get a Jaeger ball and your man went mad. Yeah, that, I, that, that's, yeah, that's. Hmm. You can, yeah, in that I, instance, it's all right. Like you know what I mean. When it's when it's both, if it's people sitting in the front row having a fucking a big conversation, having a burn, like, ah, that's fuck yeah, off. Yeah. Like you know what I mean. I what f- are you? What are you there for? Like get the fuck yeah. out of it. Like you know. What have you I paid money to one. see? What have you got? What have you paid money to the show for? You I don't pay money to see Christy Moore or Tom Anthony or PJ Galler to to start waffling. Like I remember doing a gig down in some bar down the IFSC years ago. I can't remember the name of the fucking bar. I just remember it for a couple of reasons. One of the reasons I remember it, Gary Lynch, uh, just, it, it was a weird night and Gary embraced those nights, something yeah. fierce. And I think Joe Rooney might have been on as well. And I just remember Gary Lynch just deciding that he was going to get, he was emceeing it. And I just remember him trying to get everyone who was coming on to do a tumble. And he just had this thing about do a tumble. And I was like, fucking Gary. But uh, there was one mouthy. Where did your tumble go? Was that, it went fucking awful, to be perfectly honest <laughs> with you. Stuck the landing, Merrow, 10 points all across Hell the board, you, hands I, in the air. Like. I did not get points for elegance. That's what I will say. <laughs> uh, but 
it was weird. I, I know I always remember a gig because uh, when I was leaving and I was going home, some fella pulled a knife on me. It was the fucking maddest thing ever. Like, fucking what? Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I just told him to fuck off and I kept walking. It was grand. Like, <laughs> but uh, yeah, the IFSC at night time is a strange place, lads. Yeah. Um, but the, the crowd at that, just because Gary was doing the do the tumble thing, the, the crowd at that were just like, if they don't, if he doesn't do a tumble, he can fuck off or not having any of it. And it became this thing of, you better do a fucking tumble, boys. And because of that, it just, but uh, I don't know, there's been some mad gigs over. The best, well, when I say the, the best worst gig I ever experienced was Carlo and it was Rag Week. And we were doing a gig in a pub. Did where we do it together? Were you on that one as well? With, with it, Pat I, McDonald and fucking, uh, Finchy. who else was on that? Finchy involved in that. Finchie might have been involved in that. Because I remember and they, doing they, one in was, Carlo and the... It was Rag and Week and they did not know it was a comedy gig. No. And we yeah. sprung it on these people, these youths who had oh. a lot of drugs and alcohol in them. Yeah, and Carlo's a rough town at the best of times, man. It is. Rust the dog's arse, yeah. Yeah. But, yeah, it was yeah. fucking strange. I just remember Hardy stinking of fucking chips. He went into the chipper next door. It was such a bad night. He was like, I'm eating chips and I'm hungry. <laughs> he just came back in. He stink of salt and vinegar. It was just a fucking weird night, like... Finch, there's a name I haven't heard in years. Finchy, oh. yeah, yeah, Finchy, yeah, yeah. Finbar. I haven't I don't even think he's on the social media anymore. Oh yeah, he oh, went to all sons of anarchy there into the bikes and stuff like that. I think he was, he, didn't you remember that actually? Yeah, yeah. He, 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 <laughs> I was I was, li- I was living with him for a while. There was a gang of us living in a house in Inchicore. which is the landing spot for most southern southern uh, Irish yeah. and Asian countries, like. Inchicore is where we'd all land like so I was uh, that was the original answer to fucking the, the influence our house that, that show on Netflix is about, was it? Yeah, yeah, it was tell you. <laughs> I got to say it was <laughs> it was a fucking it was a house, I'll tell you that. It definitely yeah, had four yeah, walls yeah, and yeah. a roof. That was fucking Jesus Christ. That was, that was it. There was I was fucking there was mad shit. I was the part like the it wasn't mad party, but just there seemed to be this rollover of mad jokes coming through the place. Mm. Like, do you know what I mean? Like you wake up and there's a bloke from fucking Siberia eating, eating fucking warm milk, you know, down on the fucking kitchen table with no shirt on. Like, you're going, okay. This is, this <laughs> and is he doesn't live there. <laughs> no, this is Tuesday. Okay, all right. Do you know, so there was, there was any amount of... How long of did you last there, Tom? When was I last in Inchicore? No, no, how long did you last in the house? Oh, I'd, I'd say I was there. Jeez, I was there a year and a half, two years, I'd say. It was all Sounds like, like the type of environment you would flourish in, to be fair. Do you know what it was? It was fucking, it was, <laughs> it was like, it was like fucking, Dave, it was like a, an open prison, if you know what I mean. It was like, you got your bed and board, it was so cheap, but the surroundings wouldn't, might not be the greatest at the best of times, mm. but you got your fucking, you got your bed and it was fucking next to nothing. And you could leave, you know what I mean? But you're as well to be home at, at some time of a reasonable hour because that's when the fucking the nightmares come out. You know what I mean? So you just <laughs> <laughs> it was it was fucking it was it was a weird fucking spot. But I remember herself, she she had rented up the road as well. Because we were good Catholics, we didn't live together for another while. Um she lived but where if we where we were was old in Chihor, but down on she lived down on the main fucking Emmett Road. And like, hmm. holy sweet Jesus, like the fucking, the carnage. And it's only a couple of hundred yards away. Like, what the fuck? Like, there was a drug dealing ice cream van. It was the best thing you've ever seen in your life, right? He'd pull bling, 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 bling. Music going fucking way too quick, right? Because he's coming up the road at about 60. And he used to pull into this little estate across the road from her place. There was about five houses in there. And he'd just pull in at 2, a, 2 a.m. like, bling, 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 bling. And he's serious. Yeah. And whatever you wanted. He was selling it out the side, like proper, open it up like the fucking, like like the fucking commitments. You with know the, what I mean? Just with the music on at two in the morning. Didn't give a fuck. Nobody touched but it. Sure, how, how else are the addicts going to know, Graham? But like it was, and I mean, there was a cop station around the corner, but she didn't, they'd raid it every so often just for the sake of it. But sure. The, 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 the maddest thing we had in Ballybrack on a similar level was Pat the Oyster, and he used to sell you single cigarettes. <laughs> oh lovely yeah 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 yeah, yeah. You'd get, you'd, and like you'd, it'd be 13 year olds less fucking 10 year olds running up to him and being like uh, two John Player Blue please Pat and he'd be like are they for your man da? yeah <laughs> grand there you go there's your couple of ciggies go on and he'd be taking the fucking he'd charge everyone different amounts he couldn't give a show which ones oh this is a girl alright 20 pence love this kind of thing you know what I mean he's a fucking 
single fags yeah there used to be a shop in tip town all right they used to man used to sell single fags out of it like and he didn't give one fuck who was buying them. I literally a toddler could crawl in there and uh, <laughs> have them. just be it, only two words be two major and he would fucking sell it he do a fuck Jesus. how much were they actually were fuck all like I mean your man was making a, a massive profit on him because he'd break up a pack of fucking 20 I'm sure he was probably selling them at 10 or 15 pence a piece. Like, I'm sure at the time a pack was probably only 15 euros or 15 or 150 or whatever. But he didn't, yeah, he didn't give a fuck. Do you know, I it remember was... that you used to be able to, you used to be able to buy fags with like a note from a, a note from your yeah. parents. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Fucking telling you now, lads. Remember, remember the shops as well you used to give your parents a loan? Like, yeah, what? Yeah, you'd, yeah, yeah. You'd go up the list, you'd go up the list to be about eight quid and it says in the note, like, Oh, you get it on tick, like yeah, 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 you get on tick, yeah, yeah. Fuck I know, man. I know people that get manly on tick, Danny. I know Stop. George, George, George manly does tick. George opened the book, like, and you pay, pay, like, if people get paid on Friday, he'd he'd let them. He'll go in like regulars on a Monday or Tuesday might order a curry and say, George, can you put on me book and I'll pay you? And he says, yeah, yeah. And he the person go open a Friday and pay their whatever their bill is. Is that a Tom, this is the Chinese? That's the Chinese takeaway, Tom. Yeah, it's, but you. You'd like, be guaranteed to be paying fucking cash too. You see, them boys, they don't fuck around them. George lads. Manley, he doesn't take hard. George yeah. Manley is nuts. Like he, yeah. he has it all worked out though. I was talking to him one night, and uh, he, he exports from Ireland uh, whiskey, um, yeah. Hennessy, Hennessy, Hennessy cognac, yeah, 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 Hennessy cognac and Jameson whiskey, and at the time when I was talking to him, this is years ago, years and years ago. I think it was MP3 players. Mm. Um, and he was making a fortune. His area in his province in China loved uh, Hennessy and Jemson. And uh, he was sending over containers every month. Like this is a this is a Chinese man that r- runs our local Chinese who speaks a bit of Irish. And I think he's got a master's in mathematics. And Math- he's a mathematical taxi- engineer. Mathematical, mathematical engineer. And he's a taxi driver. Yeah. See, he's and taxi, and he's a legend of the area. The, you wouldn't make is, a bean like, shirt of mathematical engineering. What the fuck are you doing with that? He knows where the money is. What is that actually? Yeah, no, he knows where yeah, the fucking money is. I remember, yeah. like, he, he, like the the the, the rumor. He's a saint, isn't he, he Dan? Ah, uh, he's he's and he's always smiling. He's such a smiley, happy kind of man. Of course he is. So, You'd be smiling but, too if you were pulling in fucking ten k cash on a fucking Friday from lads. Put a little fucking black bean and fucking. If I was curry the order, chips. if I was if I was turning up something for delivery and it wasn't the order. That he'd be used to from my brother. He'd be like, mm. he'd, he'd recall it. He'd, he'd say, Is it not the, the usual order? And I'm like, No, no, no. I he, haven't lived, I haven't lived in Ballybrack in three and a half years. And some stage last year when I was up with the folks, I said, Go on, we got a Chinese. And I rang. And when I gave the order, there was this weird silence and he goes, 91. And I said, Yeah. Where have you been? <laughs> And I was like, oh, it, yeah. I'm telling you. Like, because clearly there man. hadn't been an order, you know. The but he, uh, years ago, when Paparazzi Nightclub was still a thing in Dunleary, lads. Oh, uh, Jesus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We, we, we bundled into a taxi one night and it was George Manley. And such is his character. And all bad words said about him by anybody uh, in the border. The, the Chinese was closed. But we were like, go on, George, go on, give us a feed, go on. So he fucking pulls up outside, it bangs the shutter, the shutter comes open, a couple of three and ones come out. Are you serious, Danny? Not making that up. What time Not... is this at? That like, is close? fucking It would have been class. about two o'clock in the morning. You're been... class. Yeah, sure, what time did Paps close at? Two, half two? Half two, yeah. Yeah, you know what I mean? So, yeah, literally pulls up, he hops out, bangs on the shutter, the shutter comes up, a couple of tinfoil trays come out. Unbelievable, Happy what a days. legend. Fucking beautiful Happiest boys in the world we were. They don't mess around like them them fucking Chinese boys when it comes to it. They they're on fucking real for making money. They're on yeah. like oh, yeah. like I guarantee you he he hasn't told you, but I guarantee you owns probably two of them in fucking horse and jockey. Like you know what I mean? They <laughs> they never own just one because no. they have a rollover of cash that needs to get into the next one. I saw I saw it was a couple of years ago, it was outside. It was outside a fucking Costa Coffee. I'll never forget it in Cork one time at a kind of industrial estate. And this, and I know you're one because I know her father. Her father is about five Chinese around the country. And she pulled up in probably one of the rarest four by fours and probably one of the most expensive four by fours in the world. 
it was what's known as it was a it was a G wagon, but it was the red branded Brabus. Now, right. Brabus are like Cosworths. Years ago, they'd take your yeah. car and then they'd make it super. Well, they Brabus take a Mercedes and they make it better than a Ferrari, basically. Michael Schumacher, when he was driving, he wouldn't drive a Ferrari. He drove a Brabus. And when he was driving for a fucking Ferrari and she pulled up probably a 200 grand fucking Jeep, pulled up and jumped out of it, not even pulling the handbrake. She was answering the phone, <laughs> left the door wide open and the thing rolling across the car park. And there was there wouldn't be another one in the country, like. And she just walked away from Jesus. it. Walked away, and there's ca- like a ball of fucking cash. I looked into it. There's a ball of cash sitting where the coffee cups would be, like just like fucking. We're talking done, yeah. like fucking gangster level money. To just couldn't give a fuck. This yoke could mine like a baby, like and you want just was stood out of it, like ah fuck it. It's just we got to burn the cash somewhere. You know what I mean? <laughs> They don't, they don't Jeez, fuck. I never bad. fuck with them lads by they fucking buy and sell you. And I love I love when they don't take cards. They're like, no, nah, there's an ATM around the corner. Yeah. Sort it out. He's still he's still <laughs> on just eat, is he? Trying no, to he's the only one that isn't. He won't do just eat. That'll tell you. He knows. Yeah, paper trail. Be fucking paper trail and just eat. And the ah listen, and the demand, that's the thing. He knows the demand is in the border that he's like, I don't fucking need just eat need me. I don't need them. Yeah. I'm yeah. providing a service. <laughs> Tell you. Do you know Anything what I, I know we, we, we haven't spoken once to about rugby to wreck Mero's fucking head. <laughs> Mero, yeah. you're wearing an Ireland fucking is do you call it football or do you call it soccer? What it's what, the proper name of it is football, so I call it football. Yeah, but, and that doesn't you know your your uh Republican fucking pride and all the rest when it comes to Gaelic football, you're okay with that. You can you can have two, can you? I'm just. I'm only asking because what I want. I want you to sell soccer. To I'm me. not. I, I'm not. I get. I'm not a GEA fan, so I, I'd call it. I'd call that Gaelic football, a my football football. Can you can you sell it to me and Danny? Can you sell football, the beautiful game as the and as it's well, called I'll, itself? I'll, Danny, Danny's a football. I, I I am a football fan. Like I'll I'll happily sit and watch it, but I I wouldn't be as uh, certainly especially about going to a live game like. Merda, Merda would definitely be, you know, you'd have to try sell that to me more so than, but I'll, if there's nothing on and yeah, do you know what? The channels, sell as a night no. at fucking, it's, it's, is it Bose or Shamrock Rovers you're into? Bose, he's a Bose fan. Bose, sell a night mm. at Bose for us. Come on. Go on, Merda, tell them about your season Tom. ticket daily mount there. Tom, sell it. How long do we know each other? Fucking forever. I, uh, I'm you yanking I'm your a, chain. You think, you think I'm a Bose fan? So your chair is red and black, Merrow. Tom, you think I'm a Bowes fan? It's fucking... Uh, what's the name of your fucking crowd? <laughs> it's no not Shamrock Rovers. St. <laughs> Pat's. St. Uh, Pat's. Is it? Shamrock Rovers, you tick. <laughs> Tommy gets very upset about this. I, I gave you an He's option too. Me up. He's winding me up. What? You're a good actor. Where are Bowes based? Are they based in town? In Inchicore? Or is that St. Pat's? Nibsbury. That's Pat's, yeah. Bowes are Daily Mount Park, yeah. Right, Fibs right. Patrick and Pat's Did you ever go to... Or sorry, no, uh, uh, Shamrock Rovers are in Tallaght. Rovers, Rovers are Yeah, did you ever go to Pat's when you lived in in Shakur? I did, I did. I went in there, what, there was a fucking... Literally, there was a fucking... Uh, there was a game on, no idea. A lot of people seemed very enthusiastic about the thing. And I went in. It was, uh, it was a Friday evening game. Went in. I wasn't fucking shouting for anybody in particular because I had no idea who either one of these were, but... They were, they were playing bowls. And the, I mean, they seem to be all really enjoying themselves. It seemed to actually be more of a pantomime in the audience than it was as to what was going on in the field. Because truth be told, I haven't watched a lot of soccer, but it wasn't what we'll call, it wasn't a Formula One of soccer, if you know what I mean. A lot mm. of lads, some lads actually missed the ball a few times. And that's, you know, I'm just saying. It, but it ended up nil-nil and, and nobody was furious. That's what struck me. It was like, everybody's okay with nothing. Nothing. Yeah. And that's, you know, I, I I could see the crack that people were having, but the fact yeah. that you, I think the game was secondary to the shit they were giving each other more than anything else. <laughs> I think it would, that, that I could, I could appreciate the kind of row and, uh, you know, fucking sentiment and the whole thing, but the game finishing up with nobody scoring nothing. It was like, we are an hour and a half into this and nobody scored nothing. What <laughs> the fuck is going on? <laughs> like, and nobody seems pissed off with that side of things. 
Everybody seemed okay. It's very well, rare. It's very rare for a rugby match to finish nil all, isn't it? You'd never ever see it. You'd never see not, it. Not not in this day and age. You wouldn't. No, in this you wouldn't. Day and age. Back in the day, you might get very low score and kind of a single penalty decide the match kind of carry on. But in this day and age, has there ever been a nil all? Ah, there would. I'm sure there has somewhere in the annals of it, but like no. In terms of, have you ever watched a nil all? No, 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 no. Never no, played. Not, e- not even watching. Nil-all. I, schools rugby yeah. would often be low enough scoring typically like because yeah. you, you haven't learned how to unlock defences like they do in fucking the senior game so it do, a lot of it comes but I think the lowest scoring matchup was ever involved with was 6-3 and even at that it, yeah. and it was a fucking damn squib you're like well this is a fucking disaster for everybody you know what I mean we won but it was like <laughs> well this is fucking shit you know but that's what blew my mind it was like when are they going to put fucking get, let them have a point or you know widen the fucking goals or something do you know <laughs> Fucking do something because that's the thing. That's, that's what the, football's missing. Yeah, that's the only thing I think. I, I'm not. I'm not against it in any way. But so, football seems very stuck in its ways. Like rugby, what they're trying, what they're kind try, constantly trying to do is create new fans. So they're trying to make it an attractive but, game. So they change the fucking rules every year so that they can make it more interesting. There's more tries being scored. More people are getting busted. Do you know what I mean? They're it, it, they're all the time trying to fucking make it more interesting. I'm stuck, I'm stuck be, hang on, lads. I'm stuck. I'm stuck on Tom's idea here that at the 70 minute mark of, of a football match, it's Neil all. And Philip Schofield asked the manager, Do you want to use your simplify? And it makes the fucking <laughs> net bigger like it's the cube. <laughs> That's what we're missing. It's not the new of VAR. It's not the new of VAR. It's just that. give me the simplify. The net gets bigger. It's <laughs> <laughs> out four foot on either side. <laughs> Fuck yeah. It's mad, Tom, the way you're saying there about you know the, the rules they do they they try and change it to make it more kind of as well as entertaining them for the spectator. But I was saying to Danny recently enough, um, doesn't like lately, like I'm a I'm a sports fan, so yeah. like I would look out for rugby. Sure, you played rugby um, for Ireland for fuck's sake. Yeah, so I would I would look out, but I'm finding if um I'd say you know probably during the pandemic, actually, I don't know why that is, but I'm finding it more like even with Leinster results or even Ireland results, I'm finding out the results the day after, as opposed to the pre-match uh, chat during the match. I don't know where I do be during the match. And then it's the next day where I'm kind of like, geez, I didn't even know they were playing. And but what is is that just me or? I, I think. Is that a fair remark? I, I, I think it is, yeah. I've it even probably is getting lost bit. in the fucking in the forest of shit news that's at the minute. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I've, I've gone a little bit off the boil with it as well. I think what hasn't helped is the the what what are they calling it now? The United fucking Nations League. Yeah, it's ball of bollocks. Like, yes, yeah, it is it's, the, the 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 domestic competition that now features Ireland, Wales, Scotland, Italy, South Africa. Yeah, you know what I mean. It's just it's. I don't think that has done anything for fans in terms of appeal you know and I know the lads are working hard on it and uh, you know Adam Redmond who myself and Merda would know is, is obviously working his balls off to try and do everything he can with it as well but like it's just I don't think COVID hasn't helped it but I just don't think it's captured the fans imagination at all like well you, you're never going to get a fucking you know two plane loads flying down to fucking Cape Town from fucking Dublin <laughs> or Dublin <laughs> no, or Limerick like. Like. do you know it's it's no. it's a fuck it, they saw it, what it is is a money deal for telly that's all that was a money oh, deal yeah. for fucking telly you're you're having to spend the two fucking weeks. Look what fuck. I mean, it couldn't have come at a worse time. And you're getting a team, a couple of teams like Munster got stuck down there. Yeah. They're like, nah, you're yeah. not. We've two cases. You're going nowhere. And then a handful that of that. That was at the start of this fucking Omicron. Omicron fucking yeah. Whatever and they you're went, nah, you're going. For, and then they held on to fucking fourteen lads. They went, <laughs> oh, you have it now. So the other thirty odd of you can go home. So Munster <laughs> had to play a match, and they had to root young fellas out from school, stop the leaving search, come out and fucking play for us. Because they were literally down to those numbers, yeah. and freakishly they ended up winning. I don't know fucking how, but because they found a couple of monsters in school, which was a great thing. But it's a fucking disaster when you think of you're stuck in South Africa. I'll look be at that minute. though. Look, look the, the beauty of that though, like where it was like games going ahead. That's it, and they did. They said, "All right, fuck it, we're going to chance a couple of hot prospects here." Whereas look what's happening over in the Premier League and the football. Two fellas get a sneeze, and they're like the entire thing. That's it. Now Arsenal won't be playing this week. Two players have coughed in the last four hours. And there's really, are they being that tight on it? T- teams are just, they're looking at it and they're like, oh, we have a couple of lads out with injuries. We're just going to say it's COVID. And that way they get out of a dodgy fixture. They buy them. So they get a little stay of execution so they don't have to play a tough game at the weekend. Like, Surely they have to prove it though. 
Well, sure. I mean, fucking was it? Which one was it? Now, I was the the cup game. It was semi final of the cup. It wasn't the league. But Liverpool were like, oh, we have a couple of suspect cases there. It was the lads going off to the fucking African Cup of Nations, and they were like, oh, oh fuck. yeah. You know, but um, so it's been used ah. for nefarious fucking reasons with some of the Premiership fucking teams. All right, I didn't. Yeah, it seems yeah. to be. I don't think definitely with rugby anyway because it's such. There's so many fucking moving parts and intricacies to it. If you haven't had a strong a string of games together, like you're going to be pants for the first while. Like they're desperate to fucking get games together, and they need. They're in a volatile position. Well, it'd be one thing to put your soccer players. Here, you might get fucking paid this week. Oh, that's grand. I made a half million last week. It's fine. You know what I mean? It'll, I'll be. T- I'll have the rent. We're all right. <laughs> the rent. You know. Whereas you're getting rugby players who, for the most part, are on decent wages. Decent. Decent wages. If you were maybe a, not even a consultant, but you know, if you had a good, <laughs> fuck, a good yeah. solicitor's job. They're not all on Johnny Sexton's salary, like you know what no, I mean. That's, no, no, they're not all getting a fucking yeah. cut of those fucking money bags, like yeah. no. What would no, Johnny no. Sexton be on, lads? Would he be on six figures? A month? Oh yeah, he would between all all his deals and everything else, like. But like, if he decided six figures more, a month, oh, a oh month. no, a year, a year, yeah, like a year, he's on a good a wage, but nothing like. The stuff so he wouldn't, be on, he wouldn't be on a million a year. Oh no, he might. Yeah, with all his stuff, can, everything, all in, including endorsements, and whatever. I'd say he clears a mil easily. Ah, he would, yeah, he would, he would. Like he, when you when you get that world player of the year status, you're like, yeah, I'll be fine forever. It's, it. it's yeah, fine. Yeah, but yeah. at the same time, like, it, it'd be nothing like soccer players. Like that's no. so these lads, and it, most of them are fucked by mid thirties. So you you gotta fucking spread that butter over the toast for the next couple of fucking years. You know what I mean? <laughs> you see a lot of them lads. How all... yeah. many years has Sexton got left, lads? I think this will be the last six nations, will it? No, I think he's holding out for the World Cup. I think he wants that that next World Cup. Really? Yeah. Are you so really, you know, yeah. He he said it. He goes, "I want, I want to emulate fucking Tom, Tom Brady." He said, mm. "You know," and he's with the fucking techniques they have nowadays for fucking bringing lads back from injury. Like you see, there's a couple of old fellas and they're fucking playing on. Like Peter O'Mahony's he's playing better stuff than he's ever oh. fucking played, and he's fucking. Has sex and not got concussion issues though. Nah, he well, they is... reckon he had back in the day, but. He hasn't in a long time. It hasn't been an issue in a long time. Like, yeah, I was going to say, he, ha- he hasn't had any in a, in a long time. There was that period where he took, what was it, three, four months out when he was at Metro or whatever, or Racing. What, what did they call themselves now? Was it Racing? Did they drop the Metro? Yeah. Or did they, no, yeah, they, I don't know. Which yeah, Metro 92. Is it now? I don't know. I don't, know. I don't fucking know. Racing I, I'll, 92. Yeah, they'll always just be Racing or Racing to me. Anyway, uh, when he was over there, he... he he, he dropped out for a couple of months because like that, the concussion protocol and whatever, and he'd got a couple of bangs in the head consistently. But I, I haven't heard the, the, the words Johnny Sexton and concussion in a couple of years, at least now. The problem is, Merrill, back in the day that they'd never keep an eye on it. And you see, mm-hmm. those three months would never happen. He, You're playing. And especially in France, where they flogged the life out of you in France. Like, they don't give a <sighs> fuck. Get out to fucking play because they have a huge television watching. Like, they barely yeah. care about anything outside of France. Like, they even really? there, ah, they couldn't give a shit. There's a handful it. of teams in the French league that care about Europe, but really, at the end of the day, they go, No, no, we play like one. I, there's a if you want to listen, I did an episode with uh, uh, Bernard Jackman, and Bernard gave a great insight. What a gentleman! Ah, yeah, he we gave had a, him on before, he was a gent. Did he give the insight on tea and? Trained in Grenoble, like the mad cons, like they just no. He was, he was only, he was. I think he was only in the Grenoble job a couple of weeks when we had him on. We had him on a, a, a good while ago, like so. Right, yeah, yeah. Well, he'd done the Grenoble thing, and he'd been hmm. parted ways with dragons, and he yeah. had, a bit, as he said himself, have a bit of spare time at the moment, Tom. So, <laughs> but he, oh, I didn't go into the dragon stuff because it's still fairly raw, like you know, the fucking leaving him or whatever. But he was talking about the Grenoble shit, and like they don't give a fuck. Outside of, they don't give a fuck outside even of Grenoble. Play your bollocks off at home and win all your home games. Outside, mid, play, play. It's fine. Are we all enjoying ourselves? He told us this great fucking story. They were after, they were, he worked the table out in such a way that would keep him up, but they were dire. They were, they were after getting into the the Premier League over there. They were after getting into the first division, but he'd worked out the connotations of somebody else that was playing had to fucking lose by a couple of points and that would keep him in. And they were going to have to play somebody like Toulouse. They were going to get their holes handed to him. And it was a weird end of, end of season time where he allowed, they didn't think they were going to have to play a game, but he allowed a bunch of the Fijians and fucking hard big bastards go home. So they were just left with the pups. And uh, on the way to the game, he's fuck right, I better get their head in the fucking game because we, we've got to show up. 
and they're on the bus and they're driving and all of a sudden the fork in the motorway that should be heading to the fucking wherever to Toulouse or wherever went to an opposite fuck the total opposite direction she's like I'll say nothing because they're fucking <laughs> French like you know what I mean and <laughs> next thing after about two hours on this country road they're bopping down along and they end up at this fucking small little seaside village I said what the fuck is this we're supposed we have a game tomorrow we're supposed to be in the hotel getting our fucking heads and uh, <laughs> next thing they stand off and they're on this pier like fucking in fucking Dorky this little old and this fucking guy the, the CEO, the boss man, the owner comes <laughs> in on a fucking speedboat and he's like, hey, he's like, fucking hey, I thought you were meeting us there. He goes, no, 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 no. First we hang out and we have some wine and oysters. And he's like, fucking wine and oysters. I've got a team of fucking athletes and we're playing a serious game. To me. What? And he's like, what about fucking like sugars and carbs and proper, you know, they're supposed to be loading. He's like, we have bread. He's like, fucking bread, fucking bread. But he can't, you can't say anything. He'd keep all this inside because once you go at the French, they'll go, fuck him in the sea. They just, there's no, <laughs> there is no, there's a beautiful, no gray area with these people. There's just. Well, it, it's funny you say that because uh, when I played for Ireland, the wheelchair would be dead tournament it was in France. It's in the south of France. And we were in a different town every day for each games because of sponsorship. And every town that we we drove into, they made a huge fuss about everything. Like you, you felt like you were an athlete, you know what really? I mean? Yeah, it was fantastic. There was like no pun intended, but there was captains' runs and stuff like that where they were going out and all. And it was just it, they they just we didn't have to put our hand in our pockets for anything like. Meals were uh, pre-match meals, post-match meals, um, and as I said, when you the the local town that we would enter, like there be uh, there be people on either side of the street giving you giving the buses a clap. Like we were sharing the bus with the Scottish team, and then um, the other two, there was like three buses in total. Like so, you were just made a huge fuss of. So what you're saying there, like they even do that with wheelchair rugby stars. Oh yeah, like it's it. Yeah. They don't, they outside, they don't give one fuck about anybody, bar yeah. France. They don't give a fuck. And the there's arrogant. a beauty. Uh, there, there's, but you know what? You know where you stand with them. That was what, yeah. what that's what, that's, what's that's why I love French rugby, though. That's and even the fans, the fans do not give a fuck before the match, after the match. They'll fucking have as much crack with you if you want. But during the match, shut the fuck up, let me watch rugby. Yeah, yeah. But they, yeah. They, it's, they boo penalties and all, don't they? Oh, they don't. They don't point into any of that silence and yeah, respect. Yeah, I like that. Oh, I like that. They're fucking. I hate that silence. I went, I like panels. I went to Stade France playing Claremont, and uh, it was Stade France are playing at home. It's beside. It's called Stade Jean Bouin. It's beside Parc de Prince where Paris Saint Germain play. Right, two massive fucking stadiums next door to each other, and then an hour up the road you've got the Stade de France. Right, so we went in. Sitting, our seats are behind the goals. And they've got pink posts because they're fucking Stade Francais. Yeah. Um, and it, I, when I say it was like fucking a, a teenager having a rave on the beach because their parents were gone away and they thought they could get away with that. And it was mayhem outside the stadium, inside the stadium. Lads fucking giving it loads. Young ones were barely a stitch of clothing on, giving it socks. Beer in the air, fucking a DJ in the center of the pitch. On <laughs> death, right? It was manic. And I'm looking around going, Did you enjoy it, Dan? I loved every minute of it. It was amazing. And I'm looking around going, You would not get this at the D Fortress in the RDS. Like, you just wouldn't. Do you know what I mean? And then. D Fortress, is that a yeah, thing? That, I yeah, only heard thing, it. Yeah. I had John Fogarty on the, on the podcast a couple of weeks, a couple of months back. He's the he, he's from Cashel, but he was the scrum mm. coach with fucking Leinster for years and now he's gone to Ireland but he was he had a fucking there was there was D Fortress and there was something the oh, lion pit no it was oh it was way worse than that it was oh what the fuck was it D Fortress the D Fortress oh, oh there's an even the better one there's an even fucking better one but he was like, that's Russell Carroll Kelly stuff oh, ah, but yeah. it's I like there's I don't think it's a, it's a, a, the vast majority but it is there's a if you were if if you were to say there's a fella eating a fucking an onion, you know, with a plastic bag on his head at a monster match, the quintessential other version of that is the Ross O'Carroll Kelly. And there is some, but they play up to it. Like Luke Fitz, Luke Fitzgerald, he had nicknamed mm. when he was playing with Watch McCullough, he nicknamed him Bogatron because he was the Bogatron. fucking. But even, 
Bogatron because he was literally he was a top he was a transformer level of fucking co- of Colchi. But he he loved it. He loved it. It was like that's how you know somebody actually likes your company was when they give you a shit. Yeah. But it was even, even even the story of Keen Healy's nickname is such a fucking wank what is thing. what what like torch. The- they yeah they used to call him uh, bungalow. Then they used to call him house, and then they called him church because of his, the progression of his physicality yeah. since he was a teenager up until I an thought adult. it was something. I thought he spent some time in the fucking seminary or something. I don't. I don't. No, <laughs> Ian Healy does not strike me as the seminary head and type. Like he, I've never heard even the phrase "he's built like a church." No, never. Well, never I didn't know, but one. I think that isn't that the whole thing, though, isn't it? It's like you know, fucking, he's built like a house, and then. No, 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 and you're just trying to exaggerate it one more, like, do you know what I mean? Yeah, and they're walking by a church. Like, you're actually built like a church, man. Yeah, you know, but I think that's like I used to be. I, I haven't been Thank for a couple of seasons now. I used to be a season ticket holder, and where my seats were, there was a, a family of four, and like that was the parents, uh, the son, and his girlfriend, and they were sitting in the seats in front of us. And every week, without fail, the dad from his bag would take out a bottle of port, and now when I say like. Glass. I mean, this looked like fucking water for the crystal glass. It wasn't like plastic cups or nothing like that. And they would sit there for the match, gloves like leather gloves on. You know ah. what I mean? And and like don't run it. The RDS is Baltic during the winter. It is close. Did he get fucking... out the paddy and the sourdough bread? As oh well? my god, man! Like I go to the Eddie Rockets truck and come back at me chicken tenders and me garlic sauce, and they'd be sitting there with an actual glass. I mean, glass like they'd have napkins around it, and they'd be all very delicate and all. Here you are, Sandra, and who you are, Jim. Yeah, you wouldn't fucking, think those people actually exist, you know I mean? but they do and, exist. Like, and it, yeah. like a bottle of port would come out, and he'd be showing it to them as if this week it's a 1996 vintage, and <laughs> as you can see, and then they'd pour it, and they'd all sit there for the match just, just sipping this port, and if, if Lancer scored a try or not, the glass would stay in hand, but they'd clap on their wrist. Ah! It was... It was no. You what you have to yeah. do? You have Mer- and, Mer- and you did you buy a season ticket after that season? Uh, I did actually, yeah, but I changed I changed my location in the ground. <laughs> no, what you need to do is go and just just even just infiltrate a gang of monster fans at Endholment. It's the most angry. Everybody's a bricklayer, it would seem. I don't know why, but everybody's angry just because they they know they're dangerously le- know the levels of the rules inside out. And just rows between men back and forth just seem to break out the whole timeline. That while the match is going on, they'll be like, just fucking rowing back and forth, just anger. That's what I pick up every time I'm ever in Tom. It's just people because it's it. They're they are blue collar fucking people. Like give so us an are. example there, Tom. But you, the last day I was inside that it was it was like there had been no rule change. They'd been claiming this rule change of something to do with a fucking kick or a, it was a kick. And these two lads just started fucking ripping into each other. Like, and both of them were completely fucking wrong as to the distance. It hadn't come in yet. It was to do with, it being talked about. This is four years ago, the 50-22, which has been, it was being trialed down in the Southern Hemisphere that if you kick it 50 metres from inside your own 22 and it bounces out, you get to throw it in because it promotes a big fucking boot. But what it also does, it puts fellas... It forces defences to leave a couple of fellas in the backfield, which breaks up the line of defence, meaning there'll be more fucking tries. They thought about it a few stages away. And this hadn't come fucking next and near Limerick for sure. And these two fellas were rowing back and forth that it was different things. And I'm going, the fucking game is passionate. But then you could see other fellas kind of shouting in, going, here, fucking. And pure Limerick accents too on top of him, like, do you know, there's nothing, there's nothing. Oh, lads. Tone it. Ye are the fucking polar opposite to Danny's fucking crystal fucking maze up there fucking oh, playing. Do you remember the? So they're giving maze out now? about a rule that hadn't been cut. Yeah, 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 yeah. But mm. but they knew that rule was coming in. That was the fucking meant. Nobody else seemed to fuck like. But that's that's what you're dealing with. You're dealing with people who deal with this on a religious level. Like like families, it would nearly need. It's nearly like marrying out of a religion. If you say your household was a fucking Shannon, and you wanted to marry into Gary Owen. Oh, fuck, really? You need you oh. need some sort of letter and some sort of peace agreement to broach that, yeah. But that's the the AOL has, has suffered rating. so fucking much, though. That's the downside of all this. Like, it's all great and well, the fucking professional era, and you know the 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 province is doing great and all that thing. But like, the, it's it's the clubs. It's it's fucking round the country that those clubs have suffered, man. Well, we and talked about it, and you could look you could look to the likes of Merrow Shamrock Rovers and how they mm. have rallied locals. Now, I know there's a huge catchment area, 
Do you know what I mean? Mm. Like Dublin does have huge fucking catchment area. Like you're all, like for all the world, Mero, there's there's 150,000 people between you and the stadium. Do you know what I mean? Living. Yep. There is, you know, in talent. Like where the fuck would you get that? You know, to create the the, the ethos of the AIL. But I remember like going to fucking Interpros games when I was a kid mm. where Leinster would play Munster and there'd be fucking 50 Leinster fans. But you know, oh, yeah. And be, yeah. Leinster wasn't a thing in the 90s. Like, and there was, there'd, be, like... there'd be maybe 400 and but then you'd you'd have been at a young monster fucking Shannon match the the, the week before and there'd be twelve or thirteen thousand people at it. Do you know? Yeah, really? They didn't give a f- yeah, they didn't give a fuck. We had that fucking mixing with clubs, Ugh. you know. But I still to this day I know fellas that wouldn't watch Ireland. They wouldn't give yeah. one fuck about Ireland, but they'd be monster through and through. Like they go, oh, fuck that, and yeah. fucking yeah, mixing with that shit. But even and even back down a level, they go Carcon for me all the way. Like couldn't give a fuck about monster. Do you know? Mm. Yeah, old, and they're starting to get better. I talked with fucking with uh, watch McCall about Jackman about that that time. I was like, what, mm. did, what, what needs to be done? They need to sexy up the AIL. There needs, you know what I mean? They need somebody who's yeah. smart with fucking footage and be putting out social media. And they're starting to do it better and better now. But like you look at that day, I went into um, St. Pat's were playing bows. It was fucking full. It was yeah. fucking full. You yeah. know, you could see how you could run a relatively <clears throat> unknown uh, to the rest of the world. They wouldn't know what St. Pat's or Bows are, but mm. they had a full stadium and they were able to pay their players something. Do you know? Yeah, yeah. Now, do you know, I don't know what were they paying them in bread? I don't know, but <laughs> they were. <laughs> they well, they'd be they'd be on the likes of like like Rovers, Pat's, Dundalk. The 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 they'd be on a very livable wage. Like they, you're talking probably thousand a week, maybe. Would they? Mm. Yeah, 800, you know, it depends on the age and the experience and stuff. But <clears throat> if you've got a player, if you have a player like Owen Doyle coming home from Bolton Wanderers, who Bolton are raging, he's left Bolton in the middle of a season to come back home to live in Ireland to play play for St. Pat's. Like he, I'm going to guess he's probably on about 2,000 a week. You know, which which is great money, like, do you know what I mean? And, and fucking savage if, money. If, if, like, if if the league is keeping players, like, we have Jack Bourne, who was with the Rovers for two years and then went off, and now he's back for two years. But the two years he was with us, he was absolutely majestic. And it's it's just, like, the, the thing that the RFU always get right is the marketing and the promoting of the game, I think. Um, and the thing that the FEI is the opposite. They don't get the marketing, and they don't get like if you've Jack, if you've got Jack Bourne playing in your league, I'm not, I'm not exaggerating with this. He's the best player I've ever seen live, <clears throat> um, and he's he got Ireland caps by playing for Shamrock Rovers. You have to promote that. Well, like, I, I, I fifteen like, quid, I'll fifteen put this quid to, you. Quid to talent to watch an Irish international play. Do you know what I mean? I'll put this to you because I suggested this before, and I was laughed out of it. And this is what turned around. Ireland for rugby sure back in the day were like the Irish soccer team. They'd give it a fucking lash. They'd burn yeah. out after 50 minutes. But, you know, they'd try and keep it under fucking 50 if they were playing big teams like France and England. They might they might take a scalp once or twice. But the reality of it, not ever happening. Do you know what I mean? But pints back into Shelburne afterwards. Lovely stuff. But the what brought it together was... The taking of the interprovincial seriously, like I said, there was that time maybe when I was 12 13, nobody would go see Munster, Leinster, or fucking Ulster, or Connacht. they didn't give a fuck. It was all about your local club, much like St. Pat's or Shamrock Rovers. Would there or could there ever be a provincial fucking soccer setup in Ireland? No, we don't. I don't think so. It's the only like, way they're going to succeed at the international level is to actually pool their you, resources. If you're to, I mean, oh, I think. I think populations um, make that kind of unworkable, maybe in terms of grassroots and football in different provinces. It wouldn't be, it'd be huge in Leinster versus maybe in the West, it wouldn't be that big. Do you know that way? I don't think the provincial, when you look, when you have about six Dublin teams, yeah. Um, and you have, you don't have many, you only have Cork and Limerick. Uh, well, 3DFC they're called now. Yeah, I mean, I see what you're saying, and and it, like, and in an ideal world, we'd even have a team in every county, but we don't even have that. Um, uh. so I think, I think, since John Delaney was given the boo, I think we are on the road to something good. Um, 
the underage leagues seem to be progressing with Brexit as well. Uh, um, players aren't allowed to go across to England now until they're 18. So that that's forces, way healthier. That's because that was yeah. always weird. Fucking, I'm 12 well, and I'm going to fucking trial for Chelsea at uh, your 12. You've got just made look, your confirmation. Look, Stop that. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It Those. doesn't stop them though, to be honest, Tom, uh, going to different countries because Shamrock Rovers, um, young lad Kevin Zeffi has signed for Inter Milan. Uh, St. Patrick's athletic player, I can't remember his name, his, his name escapes me, but has has a uh, sign for Rennes in, in France. In France. Yeah. So there are um teams now across Europe that are looking at Ireland because of the Brexit thing. So that could work for us and against us because a lot of our players now, uh, the ethos is to play along the ground, to play from the back. Uh, our national team are trying to play that. The teams under them are trying to play that. And when you see Shamrock Rovers under Stephen Bradley, they play that style of football. So, and that's watchable. That style of football to me is watchable. Yeah. Um, so I think because of that, we could be going in the right direction. I mean, all the signs are there. We've got loads of players coming through. Adam Oida, Oida scored for his first Premier League goal at the weekend for Norwich um, against Everton. Um, there's loads of players. Well, what they need so is a man at the top who's fucking actually not. Somebody they like your man. Commit, there was a guy, Philip they Brown. Need to commit took, they need to commit to Took over the him. RFU. He took they over the to RFU him. and he was a fucking accountant. And I don't yeah. think rugby was his background at all. I don't. He was some other fucking sport, but he was what he was used to was running companies. But and in terms of your idea about interprovincial, I think what they need to do is they need to concentrate on grassroots and uh, like the FEI. And I think the RFU concentrate on the on the provinces, which is brilliant, a hundred percent. Because that's how well the international team will play. So I that's think what we're, we're, equi- we're missing the trick here. In the equivalent ah. of the FEI, they need to concentrate on the League of Ireland, and they just don't at the moment. We're missing the trick. We should abandon all of it. Forget all of that, lads. Invest in a load of PS5s and get into esports. That's what we <laughs> That's need. That's where the money is. That's where the money That's, is. <laughs> it's going to be in the Olympics in about fucking 12 years' time. It's going to happen. <laughs> Stick a PS5 with a load of young lads now and just watch us clean. Have you ever seen, have you seen those fucking digital gyms in Japan? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's have insane. Him, have you seen him like, play in stadiums? It's like, oh what the my fuck? God, man. Right, yeah. so, they're right, Phil, thumbs on the little fuckers. Like, I'm telling you now, like, <laughs> and they're all it's like, bonkers, like, man. Birds throwing themselves at me. You're going, but you were the nerd back in the day. What the yeah. fuck is going on? Oh, How's this turned around? around? Yeah, no, it's all, it's all turned around now. That's it. And now, like, they have these. These digital gyms, which is essentially, it is a gym gym. It's got its fucking weights and it's all that cardio shit and all that kind of stuff. And the idea is that, like, you know, you you, you build yourself up because then you've got more endurance and you've got better concentration levels. You've a healthier blood flow. And all. they fucking put science into this shit. And it's also that a few lads can have a game of Crash Bandicoot. It's fucking <laughs> bonkers, like. <laughs> but I'm telling you. It's uh, fucking class, though. The I lo- money I love in esports. I love the, the money in esports is animal. Like I love myself and Mero were actually trying to be serious there for a good five minutes of how yeah. perhaps we could promote, you know, a sport here yeah. in Ireland. We were looking going. for answers here, Tom. And then that, is, that is that lunatic heckling from the back going, "I have an idea. <laughs> I have an idea. Somebody listen to me." And like, anybody go- here ever play a Crash Bandicoot fight, fucking, huh? fucking goggle box head himself at the back going, "Why isn't everybody looking at me? Because I'm." Very famous now. I'm on Gogglebox. Hello, hello. I've been, Guys, I've I think been stopped for up... the selfie, lads. I've been stopped for the selfie. That's oh, it. You haven't, have you? I have so in oh, Super fantastic. Value. Thanks for any Super Value Park. So in Port Leash, I've stopped for the selfie. Thanks Unreal. for Unreal. I love it. Yeah. Do you know what they need to put in a couch into the Super Value so you can sit there with people and actually <laughs> spend the day just taking photos? Five or a pop. You just with a remote, or let them hold the remote. I don't know whichever you and just <laughs> pretend to be pointing at the camera, well, and they'll be on Gogglebox with fucking Danny. If, if they want the authentic experience, they won't be holding the remote control. So, oh, okay, you know, right. Because I, enough. but if anybody is interested, I do tours of me sitting room for the tenor. Just <laughs> got to plug in for that now. Do you know what? Imagine, <laughs> imagine them, that, those, Tom. Imagine them in Super Value Port Leash on a sofa. Sit with that. Sit with. God, I, do you know? You, you joke. You joke. But like, there's ones in the UK Plus. have made a fucking living off the back of it. And this basically, you get to go to their house. It's the most bizarre thing. It's what, like, mm-hmm. so I saw you on telly, watching telly, and now I'm with you where you watch te- This is some fucking Matrix level shit where my brain is fucking that, holding in that, on itself. That genuinely could be me only fans that I'll, I'll binge watch a Netflix box set with you. 
yeah, 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 yeah. Any touching allowed or? Uh, I mean, it depends on the package that they pay for. Understood. <laughs> the fucking platinum package is like you get a bit of tit. So just saying. <laughs> <laughs> you get a bit of platinum, Dan. <laughs> well, Dad, I think we put the fucking world to right here. W T S fucking continues stronger than fucking ever. That's it's a funny games. Yeah, we're on it. We're on a, a Christmas sojourn at the moment. Yeah. Uh, while Merdo sorts out some paternal affairs, um, illegitimate children the shank kill. Uh, that too. <laughs> 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 but uh, yeah, yeah, we're still going, man. We haven't. Uh, We've, we've taken. Our, it though, Tom. I was going to say we have. We've taken our foot off the gas a little bit because we've just decided like, it's we were treating it too much like a fucking job when it wasn't. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Well, when the crack goes yeah. out of it, then yeah, yeah. yeah. But look, don't oh, yeah. it, this. It never said ever. Like it'll probably make you'll get fucking bored of not doing it by the spring. You'll go, let's fucking do it again. Oh no, we'll be back in about a week. Like we're just. Oh, like, grand, you know, fair enough. Just, yeah, no, I we've just we had been a fucking a post mortem going on there for a second. No, no, no. Like, we've <laughs> just been Jesus. we've just been enjoying our Christmas break too much. Do you know what I mean? This look, there's still tins of celebrations in my kitchen. So as far as I'm concerned, it's still Christmas. No, um, I felt like we were be a Danny should have lay down on the sofa there and listen to you with giving us the post mortem. <laughs> that would have been lovely, wouldn't it? That's <laughs> just don't give it to the summer. You'll get bored and you'll want to do it again. Don't there throw the towel in. No, we we we've, we've just kind of like. Like they're so the 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 market now, Tom. You know yourself is saturated with. Podcasts. Ah, I know, I know. And there's podcasts out there now that would probably, they they've they've been backed by that uh, company Go Loud, and like they would have they would be, I su- I suppose that's more of a professional setup, and and the guests that I suppose we would probably go for are, are who have been on the podcast, and we always like to get repeat guests because we always feel that the forty five minutes hour isn't long enough, but. That seems to be a bit saturated at the moment. We found in the last maybe ten months, and you know, pe- people are not forthcoming and, and getting back to us like they were before. You know that way. So, um, look, it's a hobby. We've, as Danny said, we took the foot off the gas. It's a hobby, and there's times where we're like, oh, we're too tired for tonight, and um, will we just postpone? Now we haven't done that in a while, but like, say for instance, we don't have that for tomorrow night. We're happy with that. Like, yeah, but gee, yeah, I suppose there's the myself and McBride were, were doing the Tom and Jerry show. We would set out and we'd say we're doing six strong episodes or we're doing eight strong episodes and we'll power fucking through them like and just yeah, yeah. that's it. We've kind of done the same except maybe four or five and then it'd be like oh we'll take a week off and then do another four or five. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah well I mean look it's still always a fucking joy to talk to you two beautiful and, bastards. And Danny's, anyway. all, Danny's too busy now because he's a star. I get it. Life. He's got super value. You know, I can't, yeah. I can't go. I can't go and boy orders probably bread without being accosted in the shop. But. It's like me when I'm his, the heart throb on, on Carrickstown. You know, I understand. Yeah, yeah. I, really understand. I, I just, I wish, I w- bloody wish I was on um, Fair City and Danny had to watch me and his and, and the lovely Oksana. God, just thought it, would, it would have been hilarious. I'd, I'd have slated you. No, I'd, you told me you wouldn't. I you absolutely told me you wouldn't. I've had a change Pro- of heart. I'd have privately, you told me you wouldn't. <laughs> Slay the joy would have. I would have said his acting is terrible. What did he get rid of him? He's no good. That's what I would have said, Graham. <laughs> <laughs> he, he's eating it. Look, hey, fuck, ah, you are. I thought you were fucking massive fan of it anyway, Graham. So there you go. There you fucking go. I, I weirdly the other day got asked for. I didn't. I, a company a year and a half ago it was during the watch. We call it. They were doing shout out things. You know those shout out things. Mm. Did you say during fucking, the watch? We call it. During the, I hate saying lockdown. I fucking during hate the thing, magic. During the thing, fucking yeah. the oak, where fucking that thing. And they went, "Would you? Would you be interested?" Said, Show the fuck. Ah, when when you did that fucking Damon Ivor stuff, they'd be mad about that stuff. There'd be a lot of, and a couple of them came in. I was, this is really bizarre, man. I look not for one. I got a big ass mustache and a fucking <laughs> mullet, and. I don't. They were like, no, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. And it was true. Like a few of these, but then weirdly, out of the fucking blue, about a month ago, and it showed that I had a tiny part in, in Bridget Neyman, where I played mm. the everyday fucking pervert from the eighties next door called Paddy <laughs> the Pervert. Literally, <laughs> it's on, so on the nose. But they just there was almost no direction. It was just like do what you want. Think of the, the pervert. And it, your man, what was hilarious was I went, which uh, he was like, oh, yeah, cool. Can you do one where like the one where you, you know, you, you were in that thing. But is it Bridget? Because he was from Australia and he was saying it wrong. And I went, do you mean Damo and Ivor? He went, what's Damo and Ivor? I went, 
because everybody had asked about that. I was like, you saw one tiny bit of me on this TV. He goes, yeah, yeah, I loved how much of a filthy pervert you went, okay, uh, well, where do we go with this? Okay, inner pervert, please. Like, so the mustache and hair actually fitted that one even better, to be honest with you. Yeah, Jesus. It's a fair yeah. point. Yeah. Yeah. But still, it looks great though. Still, they paid me 50 quid to fucking wish somebody a happy birthday with a filthy voice on me. So it was, it was literally the easiest. If I fell over now and somebody gave me 50 quid, it wouldn't have been as easy as doing that. So, Dan, <laughs> get all over. I'll get you on to him. Can't wait, man. Looking forward to it. Looking forward to it. Boys, this has been beautiful. Thanks so much. Thanks, Tom. Thanks, Tom. It's great to see you again, my friend.